and welcome to another lesson on language development. In this lesson, we are going to um, discuss the IPA vowels, and I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of what they are and how we describe them and what our various descriptors mean. So remember, in the previous lessons, we talked about how when you make a different vowel, you can use the same source of the sound and you change the shape of the filter, which is your vocal tract, without obstructing it very much, right? So it's sort of like if you're playing on different instruments, the sound will have different acoustic properties, even if you make the same sound into the instrument. So a trumpet and a French horn, you make almost the same sound into the instrument, and yet it comes out sounding very different because the shape of the instrument that you're playing into um, sounds very different, and that's what vowels are like. So when we talked about how you change the shape of your vocal tract, um, the, the, the things that we can alter are which parts of the tongue are moving, right? So are we moving the front of the tongue or the back of the tongue? Are we moving the middle of the tongue? Um, how high or low is the tongue in the mouth, right? So we might be moving the front of the tongue really high, or we might be moving the back of the tongue really low, and these create different types of sounds. And lastly, are the lips rounded or not, which sort of changes the shape of the bell of your instrument because it changes the length of your vocal tract to have um, your lips rounded. Um, and these are the same descriptors that we use to describe um, sounds in the International Phonetic Alphabet, because as we heard um, before, we use um, production in order to describe the letters of the International Phonetic Alphabet. So um, on this chart, we can make a chart that compares which parts of the tongue move. So this is, are we moving the front or the back of the tongue? Um, to how high or low does the tongue move? high being at the top and low being at the bottom. And this is kind of nice because it almost looks like the shape of your mouth. So on the left side would be the opening of your mouth and on the, on the right side would be the back of your throat. And then you can move the tongue high or low in the mouth and this can help you remember um, which vowel you're reading, how high your tongue is. Um, and when we plug in all of the letters of the International Phonetic Alphabet, these are all of the main um, vowels that you will see used in IPA transcriptions of various languages. Now this is a lot of different vowels and every language does not have all of the vowels. Um, actually, I don't think any language has all of the vowels. Um, uh, the ones that we, uh, oh, what I want to draw your attention to is the, the little note at the bottom that says where symbols appear in pairs, then the one on the right is a rounded vowel. So, um, so that's where lip rounding comes in, right? So we put them on the same dot right, but the, the rounded version is on one side of the dot and the unrounded version is on the other side of the dot. So that's what that means. Um, so the vowels that you need to transcribe English are these ones. So English has a lot of vowels. This is a fairly large vowel system for a language. There are a lot of languages that really just have e, a, a, o, u, or even fewer vowels. But English has a lot of different contrasting vowels, um, which is just a feature of the language. Um, and I'm going to take you through how to pronounce each of these vowels, um, each of the main vowels that we use. There are a couple that I won't talk about here uh, because they're not used very often. Um, uh, but I'm going to take you through the main vowels so that you can learn how to pronounce them. And basically, you're just going to have to go and learn these on your own um, in order to be able to transcribe uh, somebody speaking English. So what I'm going to do now is walk you through each of the pronunciations as the major vowels of English, um, just so that you can get a first exposure to them. Um, and you can always go and look these up. There are a lot of tutorials you can see online for how to pronounce English vowels, um, but here they are. E as in beat, I as in bit, A as in bait, and in some dialects, this is actually a diphthong, which we will talk about in the next couple of slides. Um, so just be wary that this might actually be a diphthong that is A rather than A. Um, e as in bet, a as in bat, a as in bot, a as in butt, u as in boot, u as in book. This is a very common vowel, uh, vowel in terms of how often we produce it, but it's not actually in very many words. O as in boat. Uh, aw, as in bought. And those are most of the vowel sounds that you need to, to transcribe basic English vowels. 
Um, but there are another set of vowels that you also need to know how to transcribe. Um, these ones are called diphthongs. And diphthong is um, a sort of a vowel that is actually composed of multiple vowels. Um, in a lot of ways, they count as one vowel in that you only form one syllable around a diphthong, right? You don't, uh, it's not actually a sequence of two syllables like uh, ow, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to even think of how you do this, but it makes one syllable. And so it's one vowel, um, but it cr contains two sounds within it. Um, these are sort of like slidey around you vowels. And when you do this, you start out your vowel sounding like one vowel, but you end up your vowel sounding like another vowel. So for example, you might start a sound so that it sounds like ah, ah, and over the course of the vowel, you end up sounding like e. So this would be a sound like i, right? Like the word i. It's one syllable, so there's really only one vowel there, but it's, it glides through the course of it. And usually when we write these, we write them as just a sequence of letters. Um, there are some ways that um, in, in IPA transcriptions, people sometimes will put a bar, sort of a, a curved bar over top of these letters to sort of emphasize that it's a diphthong, or they may even um, take out all the space between the two letters, um, but both of those require more word processing, and so sometimes you often just see them written in a sequence like this, and you just assume that it's a diphthong. Um, some common diphthongs in English. There are a lot of diphthongs in English. The most common ones are here. So the first one is the I diphthong, which is in the word bide, as in bide your time, right? Or in the word I, as in I am a teacher, right? I. Um, you start out sounding like ah, and by the end of it, you end up sounding like e, and so we use those two symbols for I, um, to, to, to give you the sound bide. Um, this one is A. Um, now this is one that depending on your dialect of English, you may pronounce the word bait as bait. Um, it's mostly, I think, British dialects. Some British dialects still have that pure E pronunciation. And if you do that, then you're really pronouncing the word as not a diphthong. But most Americans pronounce this word bait as bait. Bait. It does glide. It doesn't glide as far as the a uh, and e because when you look at the vowel chart, you can see that e and it are closer together um, than a uh, and e. Right? You have to do less movement in your mouth, and so it's a little harder to hear that it's gliding, but it is gliding around. Um, here's another one. Ow, um, as in the pronunciation um, that USA English speakers give to about out um, or the word out. Um, this one is pronounced differently in Canada, for example, but this one starts out as ah and ends up as oo, so we say about, right? Um, you could also use a diphthong to represent um, the American English pronunciation of the word boat. Um, now, most people really do use a diphthong here. They don't say boat, right? So there are, you would understand it if somebody said, there's a boat over there, there's a boat. Right, but it would sound like somebody was maybe from England or something, right? Most of us say there's a boat over there, right? So if you start at O and move to O through the course of this, it's boat, right? So that is a common diphthong in American English. And lastly, we have the best diphthong of them all, which is the OI diphthong, which is the, the sound that you hear in boy, right? Um, this starts out as O, you end up as E, and it becomes OI. Um, so those are our diphthongs. Um, they're basically just can, can, uh, you can figure out how to transcribe a diphthong if you know your pure vowels. So mostly pay attention to the pure vowels because those will help you to um, figure out your diphthongs. Just be aware that diphthongs are around and that you can create the transcription for diphthongs by looking at um, where the pure vowels sit. So that's vowels. Those are the vowels of the IPA, and I hope you enjoyed the lesson.